Hi, my name is Alicia Helen, and today I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint to make an interactive question. So let's say you wanted to make a test review for your students. You could do that easily using PowerPoint. So I already typed this up just to kind of save time. Question one, what color is the sky? Now the important thing you want to remember when you're typing your answers to your question is that each one's in its own individual text box. Now you're going to want to insert some shapes to tell the students which one's wrong and which one's right. So you're going to add an, I put an X on the wrong ones. And I just copied and pasted that to make it a little quicker. And then we're going to insert a smiley face on the right one. Now you're going to want to add some animations to these. So that way when the student clicks on this animation, it will tell them if the question is right or wrong. So the animation pins up and you're going to want to do the trigger for that. That way it's just not just an X there automatically for when you hit text box 3. So when they hit red, that's going to come up. And you're going to want to do the same thing to green. But you're making sure you're doing it on the arrow, not the text box. So then you're going to do that for text box 4 comes up. And then you're going to do the same kind of deal Man. when you click on blue. But this time it'll be correct. Now I'm going to add in a little shape so you can get to the next slide once you've answered this question. I'm going to add a insert a link to go to question 2. Now one thing I forgot to mention is that when you are doing this, you want to make sure that you have the mouse click off. I already do, so if this is clicked, unclick it and apply to all of them so that way the student can just click on the slide and go to the next one. They have to answer the question before that comes up. And then you're going to want to animate your arrow as well. That way your arrow is not just sitting there and then go to the next slide right away. So you're going to do appear, and you want the trigger of that one to be whichever one's your correct answer. In my case, it's text box 5, so I'm going to click text box 5. Now you want that to start with the last one, that we don't have to keep clicking the correct answer to get the error to pop up. So now if we test this, oop, see, I did it wrong. You want to make sure the animation is on the shape, not the actual text box. See, they're kind of close, so it gets a little tricky sometimes. So we're going to do appear, and we want that to click when we do text box four. So now if we show it up big, the student will click on red, no it's not red, no it's not green, but it's blue. So yay, you got the link and you can go to the next question. Now something else kind of cool that you could add in here when you have your question is you can add some hints. So you're gonna do a text box and I'm just gonna type hint. Now you don't want that hint to stay up the whole time, so the hint will just be if they get the question wrong. So we're going to animate it so that it appears when you click on one of the wrong answers. So when you click on text box 3, it'll appear, and then we're going to add another animation to appear if you click on text box 4. So then you want to, these to start with the previous again so you're not just keep clicking to get the hint. So let's try this again and see look you got a hint because it's red and hope oh, nope it's not red there's a hint the hint for green and then blue you can go on to the next question because you got it correct all right and that's how you would make a you could make a test you could obviously add some different animations instead of just appear they could fly in you can make these pretty there's a lot of different things you could do with it but that's just a basic how to do i hope you guys have a great day bye Hi everybody, Nicole here. I recently shared this interactive timeline that I created using PowerPoint with the Articulate community and I thought I would record a short screencast to show you all how I pulled it together. As you can see, when I hover over the different areas of the timeline, information and images become visible. This is all made possible using PowerPoint's actions. So let me show you how I did this. So here I am on a blank slide in a new PowerPoint project. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the View tab and open the Slide Master. Here, I'm going to delete the placeholder items on this master slide, and instead I'll add a staggered row of colorful rectangles, which represent the items on my timeline. I'm also adding in a gray header rectangle with the title and some simple instructions.
The reason I'm putting these on the slide master is to save time and make it easier to recolor my timeline down the road if need be. When I'm done adding these items, I exit the slide master. Now, the functionality that I want to achieve is that when they hover over each column in the timeline, it shows them specific information associated with that column. So to do that, I'm going to create one new slide for each item in the timeline. So to do this, I'm going to duplicate this first slide. And now when I hover over a timeline item, I want my other items to be blurred out. So I will add a semi-transparent rectangle over top of this entire slide, which will act as my blur. And then I will also assign an action to this rectangle. The action hyperlinks to slide one when the user mouses over the background rectangle. Now, with the background blur in place, you can duplicate this slide five more times. So in the end, you have a total of seven slides, your main slide, and then six slides with the blurred white background. The next thing we'll do is set up the items on our timeline. We're going to go back to the slide master and grab all of these shapes and copy them. This is done so that we can save time using the copy and paste feature. We'll close out of the slide master and we will paste these objects onto slide one. Next, we'll add a semi-transparent rectangle across the center of our timeline. For each column, we will copy and paste the corresponding colored rectangle and the white semi-transparent rectangle and paste them onto the corresponding layer. We will do this for each column in the timeline. When we've done this for each slide, we can delete the shapes that we've pasted onto slide once since we no longer need them. My next step is to add a text box over each column in the timeline. For this example, I'm using years as my markers on my timeline. So I create my first text box and I size it appropriately. And then I use copy and paste to duplicate it across the rest of my columns. When all of my text boxes are in place, I assign an action to each one. The action will hyperlink to the corresponding slide when the mouse hovers over the text box. I do this for each text box, one at a time. My next step is to copy and paste all of the text boxes onto every slide. Finally, I need to style each individual slide. So to do this, I'll do a couple of things, including adding some additional information or text. And you might also want to add in some photos or characters, like in the example that I posted in the community. In this example, I'm also deleting the text in all the other text boxes so that they are less visible and it's the column that you're hovering over that really stands out. I am leaving the text boxes there and not deleting them because I want the actions associated with them to still be functional. I do this for each slide. When you've updated all six slides, you can head on over to the Articulate tab on the ribbon to preview your interactive timeline. And voila! As you can see, when you hover over the columns, the appropriate slides with the information are displayed. So this shows you how using the appropriate actions, you can use PowerPoint to create something fun and interactive. Thanks for watching. All right, let's work through an example of how we can maybe use PowerPoint to create a learning object and uh, make, to make something a little bit more engaging, more interactive uh, for the students. Let's just take a real simple example. I have an existing lesson plan here called what is blood and if we look at the lesson plan notice we've got description audience uh, some of the skills addressed uh, standards addressed some learning activities 
And um, as part of that learning activities here, the teacher in um, two items here, five, after summarizing student feedback, the students uh, show the student this two-minute video from YouTube. And then in activity seven here, the teacher hands out a blood components fact sheet and asks the students to read through it and complete a table. If we look, here's the fact sheet. It's got... Um, different components of the blood with information about them. And this lesson plan was adapted uh, from this uh, lesson plan here that was um, posted out to this teaching resource website here. So I just took uh, that example uh, and going to see how we can uh, modify that slightly. Okay, so I bring up PowerPoint and let's just create from scratch. I'll do file uh, and I'll create a new PowerPoint, a blank presentation. So I've got kind of a blank canvas there. And let's just put a title in here and let's call it What is Blood? And let's just call that a, um, an interactive view of the or look, interactive look of the components of blood. Okay. Now, uh, in order to get started, if I go back to my fact sheet, first thing I want to do is uh, I want to have a fact sheet and have and and uh, change that into my interactive PowerPoint, and then also this YouTube video here. So I think what I'll do is I'll copy this URL for the YouTube video okay and then I'll come back I'll create another slide uh, let's just duplicate this slide and let's put in um, replace this text with our YouTube video link okay and make that a little smaller and I'll just leave this as um, what is blood and let's change the title of that to um, just say blood video. And I'm going to make uh, make this uh, whole thing smaller and bold. It, it might be bold already. Let's see. You know, there, I'll make it bold. Bring that down. Make it smaller. Bring this over. And what I'll do is... Um, Put this blood video here, the title. I'll put the URL right here. And then let's insert a vi insert the video itself. So I'll do insert a video, and it's an online video. And one of the options here is YouTube. And I'll paste in the URL we have. And click on the search. There it is. I'll highlight it and do insert. And there's my uh, blood video. Let's uh, just line up all these three objects. So they're all, I'm clicking on all three and holding the shift key actually, and clicking on the title, holding the shift, clicking on the three. And now I'll align those uh, just so they're aligned. Okay, so there's a slide I'm gonna use to show the video. Let's uh, duplicate this slide. And then let's, um, Go back to this first one, and then let's just say, uh, change this to um, components of blood. Let's make the title bigger. All right, I'll make this across the screen here. Let's get rid of the YouTube video. I'm highlighting and deleting. Highlighting the URL and deleting. And now I have... Um, some text that I'm going to leave that and bring it down. Now let's bring over all the graphics that we're going to use for the different areas for the fact sheet. Okay, and we'll use that as a kind of a menu. So I'm going to highlight on the red blood cells and click and hold the shift key. Click on the white blood cells and hold the shift key. The third one there, hold the shift key. And I'm just clicking. Now I've got those five graphics selected. I'm going to right click and say copy. I'm going to come over to my PowerPoint slide and just paste those in. Okay, now I've got those graphics all pasted in. Now let's put them in some sort of order. I'm going to put the white blood cells over here. 
I'm going to put the uh, red blood cells sorry I'll put the red blood cells in the platelets on this side and the white blood cells over here and the plasma uh, right there and let me just line up all these I'm going to click hold the shift key and click line up arrange uh, align and I want to align the middles there same thing with these bottom two align the middles I just like any things lined up so it looks uh, looks pleasurable and then let's do the same thing and align these vertically I'm going to take those two and align those vertically and the same with these and uh, just some for more consistency okay so now we've got things lined up and we've got the plasma in the middle this is what I'm going to use for my menuing and allow the student to go from place to place so what I'm going to do is click on this text now and give some instructions for the students and say um, click click on any of these objects here to learn more So uh, click on any of the objects listed above to learn more about the components of blood. When you are finished, please, um, when you, let's say, when you are, when you have completed, let's change that. When you, when you have completed all the content areas from above, Click on the exit button in the bottom right left to finish um, to ex uh, to complete. Uh, let's not complete <coughs> to to exit. There we go. Okay. So there's some instructions for the learner. Let's just um, tighten that up a little bit. Okay. And there's the instructions. Line that up. And there's one thing missing here, and that is I want to show, I want the students to actually go through this video as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put in, um, I need to put in two buttons here. Let's put in two buttons. One is for the exit, and one is to get to this blood video. Okay. So if I go to uh, add one more component here and do insert and let's put a button in a shape and um, there's a movie shape right there. So let's put that in. Okay, there's a movie shape and when I I'll click on hyperlink and select the option, I'll go to slide number three, the blood video. All right. So now, and let me use the, I like these uh, auto aligning functions within Word, uh, within PowerPoint. So now there's a button there to play this uh, video. And let's just put in some text because it's not really clear um, what that really does. So let's put in some text. Actually, let's change the color of that too um, and make that a, a gray button. I like that look there. And let's put in some text and put in um, YouTube video on blood about blood all right and I'll just line this text up there YouTube video about blood there we go now we got a link in that will take us to the second slide there now the thing is I need to put an exit button in so let's do insert a shape and let's find some sort of exit button um, let's just do a see something oh let's let's put in uh yeah this button that's just a blank one put it here in the hyperlink when the hyperlink comes up we'll go to um end show okay and do okay and then i'm gonna make that much smaller it's kind of big i'm gonna line it make it a lot smaller here and then just put in um 
some text that says exit button. Okay, there's the exit button text. It's lined up. Moving it over. And let's just change the color of this button with format to the same we had for uh, as the video. Okay, so to be safe, let's save this. I'm going to file, save this as um, as uh, what is blood PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a I've got some components. I've got a title slide. I've got a components of blood and a blood video. Uh, this could be our main slide to start. So let's just put in um, some instructions and get a button to go to the next to the menuing. Okay, so let's insert a button. Insert shape. Uh, there's the next button. Pretty simple there. And hyperlink to next slide. That'll work. And let's put that there. I'm going to change the format to look like the other buttons. And I'm just going to add some more instruction here. Uh, click on the click on the button below to continue. Okay. So now I just have this main. Let's let's make this a little bit more attractive here, and let's um, let's take a format uh, such as this. How's that look? Okay, and let's make that much bigger. Whoa, it's way too big. Okay. So I have my title slide it looks a little bit more attractive. It's a description of what this is, and um, get add a period there, and then a, an action button that will just take us to the next slide. Then I have my main menu here where I want to navigate, have the learner navigate from, with some instructions about what to do and review, and then I also have a a link for one button already, a movie button that will take us to the second slide here to watch the YouTube video. Okay, so now let's um, continue by adding different components for these different areas uh, within our PowerPoint. So I can do it a number of ways. Uh, let me uh, do this. I'll take this slide and I'll duplicate it. Okay, and then I'm going to remove the video. I'm going to remove the link just so I have consistency in the fonts that I use. And I'm going to um, not, not delete that text area. I'm going to take this text area and use this as my uh, first title. I'll leave it in the center here and let's call this uh, whatever our first one is here. Let's say, let's go with red blood cells here. All right, so I'm going to rename this to red blood cells. Okay, and uh, make this much bigger. And then I'm going to go back to my lesson and get the text out of the Word document there for the red blood cells. I'll just highlight that. Copy it. And paste it into my PowerPoint here. All right. Now I have my red blood cell text. Let's left align that. Let's make it a um, lot bigger. It's way too hard to read there. Okay. And uh, move this around a little bit. And uh, now I have my all my text. Uh, what I want to do is Whoops, I want to size this so I can make some room for my graphic. Alright, so i got to bring that up. I'm going to shrink my text just a little bit. Oops, a little too small. There, about 20 is good. Let me, um, I guess I get a little bit smaller. 18 probably appropriate okay point size of 18 
just really aligning these things so it looks a little bit more appealing. And then let's do one other thing and let's bring a copy of our red blood cells graphic over. So I'm going to copy that, bring it over, and put it up there so we have some, um, we'll put it, uh, yeah, just put it kind of like here, line it up with the top of my text so we have some consistency. Okay, so now I have red blood cells linkage uh, and let's do the same thing for the other so let me duplicate this let me bring over the next graphic uh, let's take the platelets graphic I'll copy that come over here and um, replace the red blood cells graphic with the platelets graphic replace the title call that platelets and then replace the text from my Word document for platelets. Highlight it, copy it, <clears throat> bring it over. So notice I'm not retyping everything. I'm taking what I did in the existing lesson plan and just kind of reshaping it, basically. Okay, there's platelets. Let's do that again for the next content area. Duplicated that. Uh, let's go with plasma. I'm going to delete this graphic and place the plasma graphic in. I'm trying to stay consistent as well on the look and feel of all my slides. Uh, changing the title. So this way uh, the learner comes to expect a certain uh, consistency. Where the graphic's going to be, where the navigation's going to be, where the titles and text, etc. Okay, so now I've got the plasma text. Just replacing now. And there's plasma. I can certainly do a lot more to um, doctor this up a little bit, but I'm just trying to, uh, more important of us, how we use PowerPoint to do navigation. So we've got plasma, we've got a couple more to go, the white blood cells. And again, I'm just replacing uh, graphics, uh, copying, pasting a number of things, and creating a PowerPoint slide for each. So let me change the title. Okay, and let me get the text for the phagocytes from my Word document, which was already created. There's the phagocytes. There's the text. Okay, and then one more time, duplicate that. <coughs> And my last one is the lymphocytes. So I'm copying that graphic. Notice these are mostly I'm just right clicking and um, pasting. And then changing the title. And one more time from my, back to my lesson plan. Get the lymphocyte text replacing that okay now I have um, I have the makings of a piece here to be safe I'm gonna save a version all right and I just have a couple <laughs> things now to do I want I want the learner to really start here on the first slide click this next button which we set that up if you remember on the hyperlink I said click go to next slide so it'll come they'll start by looking at this they'll come into this next slide which is really our main menu and it uh, has all the areas and I use these graphics and I want to use these graphics like links now um, or buttons themselves so what I can do is here on the white blood cells, I'll right click that and I'll do a hyperlink or I could have gone insert hyperlink but notice one of the options here is link to a place in the document and there it is and I, I want to do the white blood cells to number seven so when they click on this button now this become this graphics become a button for me 
and it will go there. Here's the second one for the white blood cells. Again, I'll highlight the graphic. I can do insert hyperlink, place in the document, and then this one I'm going to go to lymphocytes. So I kind of set up all my slides. Now I'm just putting in all the navigation. There's the plasma graphic. I'll right click on it, hyperlink, uh, place in the slide plasma, the red blood cells, uh, right click, hyperlink, go to red blood cells, and then finally platelets, right click, hyperlink, platelets. Okay, so now I have linkage for all these graphics here, because if you remember we did the video earlier, I'm going to save, and then the exit button will take us out. So uh, let's just see what that might look like. So if I go to slideshow from the beginning, there's my what is blood. If I click on the next button, it takes me to my menu with objects. And then if I click on any one of these, let's click on plasma. Notice it takes me to plasma. But I don't have any other navigation built in except, you know, the learner could use these forward and backward buttons. So I'm going to hit escape there. And let's put in the additional navigation so that after they go from here, from one of these subject areas to the main slide, to give them some navigation to return back. So let's start with um, this blood video slide. This is where they could watch the video. And let's insert a button, a shape, and let's call it uh, home. Let's just make it the home button. Click on that, and when I hyperlink, I don't really want to go to the first slide because that would be this what is blood. I want to go actually to the second slide. So I'm going to do slide, and then it's the component slide, which is kind of my main menu. Okay, I'm going to link on that, and then um, I'm just going to put this in the bottom right for consistency, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to change the format of it to look like um, look like our other buttons. And this I'm going to actually just put in some text just to say what this is, because the first time they may not know. I'm going to insert a text box. Let's see, where's the text box? There's the text box right there. Put that in and click over here and just type um, return to main menu. Okay, and then I'm going to Move that text right here. Okay, I'm going <clears> to <throat> keep that highlighted. I'm going to shift, hold the shift key, click on the home button, and I'm going to right click and say copy and put that on the rest of my slides now. So I left some space open there. And that, so again, for consistency purposes, that button's going to be in the same place for all of these other content slides. All right. Just a couple more to do. And uh, I now have, uh, I think, navigation everywhere. Let me save my PowerPoint. All right, and let me try it again. I'm going to just do slideshow from the beginning. There's my title slide. Uh, Interactive components, click next. Now there's next. Now I have options here. Let's go to white blood cells here. I've got information I can learn all about it. And I'll click the return to main menu and it takes me back. And notice that's just happening with all of these now. I seem to have some navigation and learner control that allows me to uh, go ahead and do any of those things. And I've incorporated video. Um, and I have an exit button. And then when I exit, it's there. So the only thing left to fix in this is um, we don't want the learner to be able to use the arrow keys back and forth. Uh, we want them to just using the buttons. So how can we uh, maybe disable those arrow keys? So there's a one way to do that with PowerPoint. I'll select the first slide here and I'll go to, um, to the um, <clears throat> transitions okay and the transitions option and notice over here there's to the far right on the menu and there's advanced slide and on mouse click is click is clicked on so I'm gonna unclick that I'm gonna change the duration this is how long a slide would go from six uh, two seconds to 60 seconds and then the last thing here is notice this apply to all I'm gonna apply it to every slide these 
these uh, options to every slide in my deck. So I've done that, and now every slide, if I go to another slide, notice it's, you know, 59 seconds or a minute almost, and the mouse click is off. So now that's all set up for all the slides. I'm going to save. And there's one last piece. So if I do this, let's see how that looks. I'll just do slideshow from beginning. And as I work through it, um, but if I hit the arrow key, notice it just went, to the, the arrow key still kind of work. So I need to do one other thing to actually with PowerPoint to make sure that arrow keys do not work. And um, if I go back to the uh, slideshow itself tab, I'm sorry, setup slideshow. If I do setup slideshow, notice one of the options here is browsed at a kiosk full screen. If I click that on, notice now it kind of disables some options. So I'll um, click OK, and now, and I'm going to save, and now when I do slideshow from the beginning, um, I'm going to do OK, I'm ready, I'm next, and I'm going into my content area. Now, as I'm hitting those arrow keys, nothing happens. So it's kind of uh, locked that in. And now I have a fully functional, kind of interactive learning object that I worked off an existing lesson plan. Certainly a lot more I could do here. I could clean up a lot of the text and graphics, add some more functionality. Um, but this was a basic way uh, to take existing lesson plan, uh, modify it with uh, technology, and create a you know more of an interactive learning object. So hopefully this is giving you uh, some inf some information and a way to kind of get started with your own projects, uh, and also got you thinking about how how you might be able to be uh, creative with your different lesson planning. Here is a PowerPoint technique, which is something that's really useful, especially if you have an interactive whiteboard. Uh, what I'm uh, going to create is an interactive PowerPoint, a nonlinear PowerPoint. And I've, uh, my first slide here is a diagram of uh, how this is going to operate. I'm going to start up here in the top left corner uh, with just an intro slide and go to a question, a real simple question, multiple choice question, one where someone can select uh, an answer from a list of choices. And uh, at that point, based on which answer is selected, I'll either go to a slide that says, I'm sorry, that's incorrect, or I'll go to a slide that says, yes, that is correct. Now, so you can see the one that's incorrect has a feedback to the question so a person can uh, ask the question a second time. So as many times as uh, is needed, I've uh, got a little loop, and finally, they'll when they get the answer correct, they'll go to the next question. The same kind of loop is there. They uh, finally answer question number two correctly, and then uh, one of the questions, just so you can see how this is done, um, I've added some graphics. So instead of uh, selecting answer one, two, or three, you actually have to click on the graphic, which is the correct answer. So uh, I've uh, pre-made all of my slides. When you do this sort of thing, it is important that before you start uh, creating these interactions, that you create all the slides. Uh, you'll see why that's important in just a second. Uh, since uh, I'm using PowerPoint, I thought I would ask some questions that are actually helpful if you're doing PowerPoint. Uh, my first question here is what key starts the presentation? And I've listed uh, three different uh, function keys. Uh, F1 is what you press for help. F3 is what you press when you're trying to find something. F5 is what you press to start a presentation. In fact, if I press F3 right now, it starts this presentation. Uh, to uh, make this whole thing work, I have to have some slides that I can go to when I click on each one of these options. My uh, first, uh, my next slide here is, no, that's not correct, try again. The slide after that is, yes, that is correct, continue the next question. So let's uh, add an action that'll make this first one work. I'm going to highlight what someone would click. They would click, actually click with the mouse on F1. And then I'm going to insert what's called an action. 
uh, the action in this case can just go to the next side because uh, F1 is not correct. The next side, as you can see right here, says no, that's not correct. I can click on OK. Same with uh, uh, F3. That action is the next side, which is not correct. But F5 is a little bit different. F5 has to skip down to the third side, uh, or it has to skip a side. Uh, and there's really no option for that. Um, it, there's the there's next side, previous side, first side, last side. But if I scroll down a little bit, there's an option that says, let me pick a slide. I click on that, and now you can see why it's important that all the sides be finished ahead of time. Because uh, I'm on question number one, what key starts a presentation. I've, the other ones have been the next side. No, that's not correct. But this one is, yes, that is correct. So not only have I created all of my sites, notice that every uh, question has to have a no and a yes because each one has to refer to the proper yes, that's correct, or no, that's not correct. I'll demonstrate that in a second. But in this case, I'm going to say yes, that's correct. And at this point, I have my three possible answers. Now, if someone clicks on the no, that's not correct, uh, a link I have to give them a chance to go back and try again so now I'm gonna highlight no that's not correct I'm gonna highlight give it another uh, try and in this case we're gonna go to the previous side again I'm going back one side for my yes that's correct I want them to click on continue and go to the next question so now my action is yes, next side. Now without having all these sides finished, I wouldn't be able to see where which one's next, which one's back. Um, let's start this. And on my first slide it says what key do I press? If I press F1, no, that's not correct. If I hit F3, that's not correct. F5, that is correct. And I can continue. Now, one other thing. What happens if I click the word presentation? Or if I just click on blank space? Uh, it's built into PowerPoint that every slide has the ability, if you want to use the mouse as a kind of a clicker, all you have to do is click on a slide and it will automatically advance to the next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my slides and uh, underneath transitions there's an option that says advanced slides on the mouse click. I don't want them to advance on a mouse click. I only want them to advance if someone clicks on the right answer. So now if I start my presentation all over, uh, if I click on the word presentation, if I click any blank space, nothing happens. But if I click the correct answer, I get the correct answer. Now you might have noticed these uh, links turned purple. That's because they're visited links. What happens if a student sits down, goes through a bunch of slides, gets every one of them correct on the first try, another student sits down, and all they see are the visited links, which happen to be correct. It could probably sway them just to guess and not really, you know, try to use uh, any recall they may have. So there's a way that you can tell PowerPoint not to change uh, these colors. If you go into design and go to colors, you can create your own custom theme. Notice here at the bottom there's a hyperlink that's blue and a, vis a followed hyperlink which is purple. If I make both of those blue, make sure they're the same color blue, now uh, those links are the same color even if I visited them. And I don't know why this one's not. I guess I just had to uh, refresh it. I hope you don't have to do that. Let's try this. Let's do it for the whole. 
I selected all of them. Now yeah, it should work for all of them. Let's see. Uh, I've got another side uh, pressing B during a presentation that would uh, turn the screen black. Again, I would go through the whole process, uh, insert an action. In this case, if I look at all the slides, I'm on press B during a presentation. Uh, that is correct. So I go to the yes, that's correct following that uh, a particular slide. Uh, and go to my last one here. And that's where I actually have an object I want someone to click. So instead of having a uh, text, they would have to actually click on one of these people. Uh, now, if you want to make this one a little more difficult, it says click the 20th president. That happens to be Garfield. But let's say you weren't going to give them the names. They would have to figure out after they say they look up the 20th president or they know the 20th president, then they're going to have to figure out which one of these guys is James Garfield. Uh, what I could do if I wanted to is I could um, go to my format tool and I could crop those names right off uh, just to um, add a level of difficulty to the question. Uh, now not only are they, gonna, are they gonna have to know who the 20th president is, they're gonna have to come up with a way to figure out which one of these guys is Garfield. So in this case I do the same thing as before. I click on uh, the picture that I want uh, the viewer to click on and I insert an action and I'm all the way down to uh, click on the 20th president. Garfield is correct. If I uh, do the same thing for uh, Grant, let's look and see. I uh, know that's not correct. And Rutherford B. Hayes. If I go to slides on this one, no, that's not correct either. Uh, just in case you're wondering, the common theme here with these three presidents is they're all from Ohio. Uh, so now let's see what my presentation looks like. Now, notice uh, I don't have a way to get out of this first slide. Uh, what I would really need to do is put a start right here, something that says when I click on it, go to the to the next slide. What I actually did is when I um, looked at those transitions, that first slide, I left the mouse click as OK. So the rest of them, it's turned off. But on my first slide, just so I had a way out of that first slide, so I can click on this one, but then I can't click on these. So F5 starts a presentation. Uh, B turns the screen black. And Garfield is the correct president. Now, if you are used to using the uh, arrow keys, you can still arrow back and forth and go right through this presentation. So I could test Grant, that's not correct. Uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, that's not correct either. Uh, but if you let someone use a smart board where all they can do is uh, click on the pictures of the words, uh, they wouldn't be able to use the keyboard like I'm doing. Uh, I have the whole, this uh, whole thing finished. Uh, what I did is I made that first slide advance to this second slide automatically and I can't click anywhere except the start. So now clicking on my slide doesn't do anything. When I click the correct answer, it works. Uh, if I click one of the wrong answers, uh, it leads me uh, to the correct side. Turn the screen black. And finally, if I click on the wrong president, if I click on the correct president. And then at the very end, I have a link that goes all the way back to the first slide. So when I click on that, it starts my, my little quiz all over again. So uh, that's really all there is to creating uh, any kind of nonlinear PowerPoint. The, the big thing is create all the slides ahead of time before you start creating the actions and always remove that uh, transition that lets you click on, click on the slide and advance it. That way someone doesn't accidentally click uh, 
outside of the objects you want them to click on.